Hello fellas, welcome back. So in this lesson, we're going to see how to perform convolution in MATLAB. So this is my MATLAB I've opened, I've cleared everything over here and I've cleared my command window as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate a number of signals. Um, we're going to generate a signal and then mix it with some noise. And what I mean by this is we're going to generate a one hertz signal and then generate another signal of a frequency of 20 hertz and combine these two signals. Then we're going to design an impulse response which will be in the form of a low pass filter with a specific frequency response so that when we convolve the impulse response with our mixed up signal, we get an output signal. So let's start by generating our first signal. Let's say F1 here, meaning frequency one equals 20. We want a 20 Hertz signal and we want a sampling frequency TS or a sampling period of one over 100, meaning sampling frequency of 100 Hertz. And we can make the signal length three seconds, capital T equals three. And then we can say T small t equals zero to capital T with interval of TS like this. We can put a semicolon here and we can call this signal one. And we can call this, let's give it a bit more descriptive name. I'll call it signal 20 underscore 20 hertz, right? Because we're going to have something very long and it's going to look confusing if it's not descriptive. So we can call it signal underscore 20 hertz equals, to create the signal, we say sign into bracket two times pi times frequency, which is F1, and then times T here, then semicolon. And then let's plot to see our signal. We can say plot signal underscore 20 hertz. And this is what we have, it's a 20 hertz signal. Right, so let's create the other signal. We can come down here and say F2 equals one, meaning we want a one hertz signal. And now we can use the same equation, but this time we pass F2 over here. So I can say signal underscore one hertz equals sine into bracket two times pi times F2 times T like this. And we'll put a semicolon here. Let's plot signal one hertz and C plot into bracket signal one hertz put a semicolon and this is what we have very simple low frequency signal so we're going to combine this 20 hertz signal and one hertz signal so we can say signal underscore 20 hertz underscore one hertz this is just to give a descriptive name, meaning the combination of 20 hertz and one hertz equals signal underscore 20 hertz plus signal underscore one hertz like this. So we add the two vectors and then we get a combined signal. So we hit enter. So now let's plot signal 20 hertz, one hertz. So plot into bracket signal underscore 20 hertz, underscore one hertz like this. And let's see, this is what it looks like, right? So this is our, our final signal. This signal has a 20 hertz high frequency component and a one hertz component within this. So what we're going to do next is design a filter or design an impulse response. And as we go on, when we get to the part on filter design, you realize that the same method that we're using here in the convolution lesson will be used to design various frequency response filters. So to design a filter in MATLAB, there is a tool known as the FDA tool, which we can use. 
So to go to the FDA tool, we can just say FDA to type it here like this, hit enter. So it's given a warning, it says FDA tool is going to be removed and filter designer is going to be used instead. So later on, if you type FDA tool and you receive an error, you, sh you can just type filter designer, right? So yeah, I minimized FDA tool, here it is. This is what it looks like. So over here, we can design different responses of a filter and then we can select the various parameters. So what we want is a low pass filter and we want FIR. You would understand the difference between FIR and IIR later when you get to the section on filter design. So we just come to FIR. Over here, we just need an impulse response. FIR, so you select least squares. Select this one here. And here we can decide the pass band and the stop band of our filter. We can say F pass equals one, F stop, we can say F stop equals six. So one has pass band, six stop, six has stop band. And we can say the filter order, let's give it a number like 39. We can make the FS over here a hundred equal to the FS of our signal. And then we click here to design. So this is our filter. This is the magnitude response of the filter. So what's going to happen is because our signal has 20 Hertz and one Hertz component, the one Hertz component is in the pass band. So it's going to go through the filter perfectly, but the 20 Hertz component is going to be massively attenuated. And we expect the output signal not to contain 20 Hertz. So this is what the magnitude looks like. We can view other graphs here as well. This is the phase response and this is the impulse response. This is what we're interested in. So this is the impulse response. Right, so if we plot the values generated by this filter, it's going to look like this. This is the impulse response. So we can export the filter, uh, the filter kernel or the impulse response you can call it either a filter kernel or impulse response but in this section on convolution we call it the impulse response so we can export this by coming here click export and then you can decide to export it anywhere we want to export to our workspace and then we can give the variables a name we can call it impulse response imp underscore response like this and then we can click here to export and as you can see, it's appeared here. So once that is done, we can close our FDA tool. We don't need to save it, no, like this. So we can plot the impulse response, plot imp, imp, imp response. And this is what we have, just like we saw in the FDA tool. So this is the impulse response. We're going to convolve this waveform with the 20 hertz, one hertz signal we saw earlier. So let's do that now.